Pastor Bill Wiggs here from the Sunfield and Greenwood United Methodist Churches in Southern Illinois with a devotional for Wednesday, July 8, 2020. This week we are working our way through the first chapter of the book of 1 John. Well, over the last two days we have been looking at verses 1 through 4, which is also known as the prologue of this wonderful book. But the Apostle now moves very swiftly and smoothly into his first major concept that he desires to get across to his readers, to these people who he has pastoral care over. This is a very pastoral letter. Yes, it is very theological, and so you could say it's a little prophesarial at times, but it certainly is, for the most part, a pastoral letter to the people that he has authority over as an elder of the church, as their bishop. And he doesn't want to lay down the law in that respect, like, hey, I'm the boss, but instead, I am your pastor, and I love you, and I want you to really understand who this God is that has revealed himself in Jesus Christ so that your joy may be complete or that it may be full to overflowing. And today we're going to be looking at 1 John 1, 5 from the English Standard Version. This is the message we have heard from him and proclaimed to you that God is light and in him is no darkness at all. Well, this is a wonderful uh, statement that the Apostle John makes here concerning really the very character of God. The Greek word that we translate as message here can literally be translated as promise. So this is the promise that we've heard from Jesus or that we have heard from him. And in some Greek texts, both the word for promise and the word for message appears there. And so what we can really look at in that is the idea that this message was a promised message for the people of God to receive going all the way back to the beginning of their encounters with the one true God. This idea that we are promised this message that God is indeed light, and in him there is no darkness at all. And so the truth that we have here is really a powerful idea that God is light. Now, we don't want to get off at any sort of new agey idea of God is light and that God is nothing more than a celestial light. There were some strange concepts of that. People who worship the sun or the moon or the stars and people who, who believe in astrology to this day really in many ways worship the sun, moon, and stars. They worship the created thing instead of the creator. But what John is telling us that God is indeed himself light. He's light. And this is the same idea that he brings to us in the Gospel of John, chapter 1, verses 4 through 9. This idea that God is light. John 1, verses 4 through 9 says, The Word gave life to everything that was created. Remember we talked about the Word is Jesus Christ. And his life brought light to everyone. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness cannot extinguish it. God sent a man, John the Baptist, to tell about the light so that everyone might believe because of his testimony. John himself was not the light. He was simply a witness to tell about the light. The one who is the true light, who gives light to everyone, was coming into the world. And so when the Apostle John says that God is light, he's referring to this kind of concept of the light coming into the world in Jesus Christ. Jesus himself speaks to this idea in his conversation with Nicodemus in John 3, 19 to 21. He says, And the judgment is based on this fact. God's light came into the world, but people loved the darkness more than the light, for their actions were evil. All who do evil hate the light and refuse to go near it, for fear their sins will be exposed. But those who do what is right come to the light, so others can see that they are doing what God wants. Jesus is talking about himself here, really, as the light. 
And in fact, in John 8, 12, he addresses that directly. Jesus said to the people, I am the light of the world. If you follow me, you won't have to walk in darkness because you will have the light that leads to life. So when John says God is light, he is saying that it is part of the very nature of God. God is not a light, a kind of light. He is light itself. All true light comes from him. As it was in the beginning when God spoke and light came into the world, over the chaos of the earth that was empty and a formless mass clothed in darkness, as the New Living Translation renders Genesis 1, verse 2, in verse 3 it goes on to say, Then God said, Let there be light, and there was light. So, the light itself is God, and all light comes from him. And so when he spoke light into existence, it was light that was absent the sun, moon, and stars. He hadn't created them yet. What he was saying is, I'm going to illuminate with my own power, with my own being, the now formless universe that I have created and that I'm about to bring into order. I am light, and all light comes from me. And this darkness that is over this formless mass that I have now created and I'm about to set into order, well, this light has come from me. I speak, and there is light. God is the author and source of light. As light itself and the source of light, he only had to speak, and light came into being. Now, throughout the scripture, we have this dichotomy of light and darkness. Over and over again, we have this idea there is light and there is darkness, and they are polar opposites. And when we have this, we have the idea of everything that comes from God is light. Everything that is God, that comes from God, is light. And everything that is anti-God is darkness. So it helps you to understand that as much difference as there is between the bright light of day and the deepest, darkest night, or I don't know if you've ever went caving at all, or you've went to some of these caves where you can like drive through them, that's pretty cool. Uh, Becky and I, a couple years ago on vacation, went to this cave where you rode in these jeeps and you, you rode through, and at a certain point, they turned off all the lights. And the darkness was so thick, you could almost feel the darkness, because our bodies need that light. But here we were in this cave with some other folks in there with us, people sitting not very far from us at all, and we couldn't see them. We couldn't see a thing. It was that dark in there. That contrast between the darkness of that deepest, darkest cave and the sunlight that we walked out into later, boy, what a difference that was. The sun felt good after being in the darkness. That's the kind of dichotomy, the difference that we are dealing with here. And so in Proverbs 2.13, it speaks of those who are wicked, sinful people as walking down dark and evil paths. They're walking away from the light of God. And in the book of Exodus, God sent a judgment on the people of Egypt, the rulers and the people of Egypt. And in 1021, it says that this judgment is described as a deep and terrifying darkness a deep and terrifying darkness. Why was it terrifying? People are afraid of the dark. You say, well, I'm an adult now. I'm not afraid of the dark. But were you afraid of the dark when you were a child? And if you really had to admit it, if you were in an unfamiliar area and it was very dark there, would it not just have you a little ill at ease because you were away from familiar surroundings Maybe you were outside in the woods in the dead of night and you couldn't see anything around you. Would that not unnerve you? I think it would. You hear a noise moving in the brush. You don't know what you're hearing. You don't know what's coming after you. What you know is you can't see it. But what if it can see you? 
This deep and terrifying darkness was a plague for the rulers and people of Egypt because they were oppressing God's people. And it was showing to them the absence of the light of God in the lives of the Egyptian people at that point. Here it was, this pitch darkness. Jesus described hell as outer darkness where the wicked will go and they will be separated from God who is the light where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth because they will be completely separated from God. We don't know what it's like to be truly separated from God. Even when we are in sin, even when we are sinners, God is near enough to us that when we call on him, he responds to us. He reaches out to us on a regular basis, even when we are in sin, even when we are far from what he wants us to be, even when we don't have a relationship with him at all, he reaches out to us, he calls to us, he is there near us. But if we do not believe in God, if we go to the end of our lives without believing, if we are part of this wicked people, then we are going to be cast into outer darkness where there is utter separation from the source of life and light. That's why there's weeping and gnashing of teeth there. Because it is an utter separation from God, which again shows you the dichotomy between light and dark. God is light. Away from God, there is only darkness. The light of God is his holiness, his righteousness, his goodness, and his love. Hear that again. The light of God is his holiness shining through into the world, showing us what true purity, what true holiness, what true goodness is. His light is his righteousness. He is right in everything that he does. He shows us what it means to live a life that is upright, that brings glory to him, that brings peace to our hearts. His goodness is his light that comes into us. And we know the goodness of the Lord. Taste and see that the Lord is good. We have experienced the goodness of the Lord. We have experienced that, that life and that light that comes from him as we live into it. And his light is the light of love, the powerful, all-consuming love of God. Think about that for a moment. There's a beautiful hymn by Corey Asbury that talks about that all-consuming love of God, his light coming into our lives. It says, before I spoke a word, you were singing over me. You've been so, so good to me. There's the goodness of the Lord. Before I took a breath, you breathed your life into me. You have been so, so kind to me. Oh, the overwhelming, never-ending, reckless love of God. Oh, it chases me down, fights till I'm found, leaves the 99. I couldn't earn it. I don't deserve it. Still, you give yourself away. Oh, the overwhelming, never-ending, reckless love of God. Oh, the overwhelming, never-ending, reckless love of God. Oh, it chases me down, fights till I'm found, leaves the 99. I couldn't earn it, I don't deserve it, still you give yourself away. Oh, the overwhelming, never-ending, reckless love of God. When the light of Christ comes into your life, when the light of his love comes into your life, it is an overwhelming thing. It is as if someone has turned on a light into the darkness when we were afraid. Think about when you were a child, if you were afraid of the dark, and here you were in your room alone in the dark, and you heard sounds and it frightened you, and as you wept, a loving parent came into your room, your father or your mother. And as they came in, just their very presence was calming to you because you felt the light of a parent's love. That is the way that we feel when we experience the God who is light for us. 
And in him, the verse says, there is no darkness whatsoever. There is no darkness at all. Again, back to our verse, 1 John 1, 5. This is the message. This is the promise we have heard from Jesus and proclaim to you that God is light and in him is no darkness at all. In the Gospel of John, chapter 12, verse 46, Jesus said, I have come as a light to shine in this dark world so that all who put their trust in me will no longer remain in darkness. In the same way that we feel the light of the love of our parents in those moments of darkness when we are afraid, Having this God who is absolute holiness, absolute righteousness, absolute goodness, who is absolute love, who is the light that has come into the world. We know the joy of his love in our lives. And in those moments when our world seems dark and we turn to God, he shines the light of his love into our lives again. And when he does that, we are filled with joy our joy is complete, as John said in just the verse before, because we have the light of God in our lives. I don't know about you, but I don't want to be in the darkness of sin. I don't want to be in outer darkness when this life is over. I want to live in the light of God like the warm sun on my face. I want to experience the light of God in my life. And I know that he dispels the darkness of my soul. He dispels the darkness of my sin. He dispels the darkness of the pain of my past. He dispels the darkness of depression that comes into my life when I feel lost. He dispels the darkness of anxiety that comes into my life when things just aren't going the way I think they should be. He dispels the darkness of addiction in our lives and sets us free because God is light and there is no darkness in him at all. I don't know what kind of darkness you're experiencing today, but if you are experiencing darkness in your life, I invite you to turn to God who is light, to allow him to shine the light of his holiness into your soul, to shine the light of his love into your heart, to lift you up, to wrap you in his reckless loving embrace, that overwhelming, never-ending love of God. He is light and he is life to us. And because of that, we can know the comfort, the peace, the joy of a relationship with him. I pray that you are experiencing that today. Let us pray. God, we thank you that you are light, that you dispel all darkness, for there is no darkness in you. You are perfectly holy. You are perfectly just and righteous. You are perfectly good and you are perfect love. We thank you, Lord, that you dispel all darkness from our hearts. When we are down and depressed, you shine light into our souls, and the darkness of that depression is dispelled. Lord, when we are anxious and we don't know what to do, when we just can't seem to get a handle on ourselves, you come and you comfort us with your light and life. Lord, when we're feeling unloved, when we have failed to turn to you, you dispel that darkness of sin in our lives as we come to you and say, Lord, please forgive me. And we're brought into the joy of knowing you. Enliven our joy today. Complete our joy. Bring it to its fullness because you are light and life to us. We thank you, Lord, that we don't have to follow the darkness of this world, but that you give us new life and light. Lord, there are those today who are struggling who may be hearing this message. And I pray, Lord, that you would just shine your light into their soul. There are those today who are sick. Pour your healing over them, Lord. There are those who are depressed. Lord, fill them with joy. There are those who are anxious. Bring your peace. There are those who feel unlovable, Lord. Pour out your love. There are those who are in the darkness of addiction. Remove that darkness from their lives and set them free to walk in your light. Lord, touch our nation. Touch our lives. Heal the sick and show your glory. For Lord, you are the very light that gives us life. And we trust you. We pray this all 
In the name of the one who came into the world that we might see your light, Jesus Christ, may all glory be to him forever and ever. Amen. Well, brothers and sisters, to tomorrow, may the Lord bless you and keep you. May you know that the light of his face is shining upon you. And may he give you peace. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. You have a great rest of the day. God is faithful forever. God is